Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would think that if we're going to single out individual states and um, individual cities that we can anticipate a future hearing on why the city of Chicago has the highest murder rates, among the highest murder rates in the nation. Um, I really think it's inappropriate for the federal government, for the Senate Judiciary Committee to try to single out um, individual states, but you have, and so let's talk a little bit about, about this. First of all, I would say this is part of a concerted effort, really a shameful broadside on the part of our Democratic colleagues to attack judicial independence. If there's one thing that uh, distinguishes the United States of America from other countries, it is the independent judiciary. But when politicians decide to attack judges and courts, it's an unfair fight because the judges can't fight back. They're not going to go public and engage in a public uh, debate about their practices. And clear that this is a part of a concerted effort to intimidate and bully the members of the Supreme Court. We saw that with the uh, shameful remarks made by the Senate Majority Leader from New York when he actually had a press conference in front of the Supreme Court and threatened two justices uh, with retaliation if they didn't rule the white way. We also have seen this with the efforts to, uh, uh, or the plans or to uh, pack the court to try to achieve a particular political result, something that not even the liberal members of the court have said would be a good idea, including Justice Ginsburg and Justice Breyer. But I think it's worth noting that since we're talking about abortion, that the Declaration of Independence does say we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, and among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And I would point out that since Roe versus Wade was decided, approximately 62 million innocent lives were denied what our founders said was a self-evident, unalienable right to life. During my time in the Senate, I proudly fought to outlaw abortions after 20 weeks of gestation, which is the time in which uh, science tells us that an infant can feel pain. The U.S., of course, is currently an outlier in the international community. We are uh, ranked right up there with uh, North Korea and China as one of the most permissive countries in the world when it comes to elective abortions because abortion advocates deny the humanity of unborn innocent life. I've also supported, after the governor of Virginia, a uh, physician, by the way, shamefully said that the appropriate care for an infant that was born alive is simply to let that infant die if it was unwanted, basically embracing infanticide. Um, I was proud to support the effort to protect the rights of children who are born after botched abortions, but all of our Democratic colleagues voted against that. In the meantime, here is what uh, our Democratic colleagues advocate. This is the uh, bill that was passed in the House by Speaker Pelosi and House Democrats, prohibit states from outlawing abortion as a method of gender selection, undermine state efforts to protect unborn babies with disabilities, including Down syndrome, restrict state laws protecting a doctor's right to opt out of an abortion based on a religious or moral objection, require states to allow elective abortions up to 40 weeks based on one doctor's opinion. I would point out the Supreme Court has actually held that late-term partial birth abortions can constitutionally be prohibited, but not under Pelosi's abortion law. And finally, we give the Attorney General sweeping authority to block state laws protecting the right to life.
Ms. Howard, if given an opportunity to vote yes or no on, uh, on this, this bill, how would you vote? Uh, Senator, I have not read the bill. I am obviously part of the Texas legislature and would not have an opportunity to vote on that bill. Well, I know you're part of the Texas legislature, but it seems like uh, Texas Democrats are spending more time in Washington, D.C. these days than they are in, uh, in Austin in spite of the special session. But as I've described it to you, would you, uh, would you support this legislation or not? What I support is that this is a medical situation, a medical determination. It should be between a doctor and that doctor's patient. And does, does the, baby, does the unborn infant have any rights at all? I'm sorry? Does the unborn child have any rights whatsoever, in your opinion? You know, I think we can agree on the fact that uh, there is potential life. I don't think that there's consensus necessarily around when life begins. Well, the uh, Supreme Court precedent, which establishes viability roughly at 24, the fact that when Roe was decided, viability was at 28 weeks roughly, but due to advances in medical science, it's now even a younger uh, unborn child can be saved. But is viability any less arbitrary than some of these other um, events in a fetal development like a heartbeat or a quickening uh, when the baby first is felt to move in the, in a mother's, uh, in the mother? Certainly there are Senator ranges Cornyn, within which these- you're well over your these... time a lot, so we'll, let me let the witness answer, but please- If you'd let the witness answer, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm saying that there are ranges in any kind of metric that you're looking at, if that's what you're asking me.